27th. It is 4.30 p.m. and we're in the Thomas J. Smith Council Chambers. Just going to remind you guys of a small crowd tonight, but uh, this is a work session, so uh, if you have not been invited to uh, speak, this is not a uh, time where we take public comment. Just a reminder to all three of you out there, so anyways, just want to get that up. All right, we're going to roll right downhill. We are having some Mayor's Awards uh, next week. Uh, number two, we have a public hearing for consideration of plans and specs for the Flint River Trail Phase 1 South A. Mr. Tisdall. This is... Uh Utilizing additional funds that we had remaining from our previous project. Um, we just uh, completed project here shown in blue, um, connecting from the ramp uh, behind Big Muddy's up to approximately Oak Street uh, with a trail uh, behind the barrier wall. Um, and that was completed uh, just here in the last month or so. Uh, we had grant funds, I'm trying to get all my notes here, uh, for that uh, in excess of. Uh, 800,000 uh, low bid came in at 440,000 so with remaining funds we were looking to do an additional project uh, before those funds expired we do have uh, reap funds in the amount of uh, 255,000 remaining uh, for construction and we did enter into a, a contract with uh, French Renneker for additional uh, engineering in the amount of 40,000 um, to complete additional section uh, so they put together plans for uh, this green phase from Oak Street just to the just short of the driveway entering Lamont. Um, they had an engineer's estimate of uh, right here, approximately 231,000 uh, for a 10-foot wide trail with a um, small retaining wall, a fence, and a safety rail on the uh, street side of that. Um, looking to uh, go out to bid. Uh, this winter received bids by uh, December 21st and have construction uh, next year uh, complete by June of next year June 29th of 2018 so uh, again trying to utilize funds that we had remaining uh, we have uh, the refunds uh, do not cover engineering but we did uh, as I mentioned enter into an agreement to cover the remaining um, engineering costs through remaining funds uh, left over from the previous project as well as uh, some of the savings through capital improvement pro uh, projects. Um, uh, some of our bids came in under budget and I, those would be used to make up that remaining fund. Right Any questions for uh, Mr. Kisman? None for me. Thanks. So I guess just while we're here, the, that would essentially complete uh, the majority of Flint River Trail for the city other than this remaining red portion. Uh, the yellow is existing that goes around Case and on the levee, uh, and the blue is what we just constructed with uh, yellow connecting down to the river uh, side park, so uh, getting closer to uh, completion of that trail, uh, which would be a good project to have done. Good job. We're good, guys? Yes. Mm -hmm. Number three, uh, consideration of an ordinance uh, providing for the division of taxes levied on taxable property in the West Avenue, Mason Road, Urban Renewal Area, pursuant to Section 403.19 of the Code of Iowa. First reading on that one. Um, this as well. Um, this is a continuation of the um, process uh, that was approved last uh, meeting. The Urban Renewal Plan was approved. Uh, this is uh, setting up the, the area uh, specifically for the Park West subdivision, uh, which is currently outlot three of the Swisher subdivision as a TIF district uh, to move forward with this project. This is the second of three, uh, I guess, items along the process. The final would be in a development agreement setting out the terms for uh, use of funds. Uh, but this, uh, this process just sets up this area, just this one uh, lot as a TIF district based on the urban renewal plan and allows for the use of fun TIF funds in this area uh, as allowed by section 403.19 of the Code of Iowa. Uh, so what we approved previously was an urban rule plan that highlighted a larger area um, and it talked about this specific project um, within that urban rule plan and now this, uh, this process sets up this just uh, one lot uh, uh, that's been brought forward and identified in that project as a TIF district uh, and then again we'd go uh, after this is uh, considered for approval, uh, if it is approved, then a development agreement would be uh, considered by the council uh, for the terms of the project. All right. Uh, Mr. Cahill's here if you have any questions or any other details as Remind well. Remind me again, 
Eric, what was the maximum limit dollar-wise? Uh, it was 350000 was the maximum uh, to the developer. And it, it's going to be 16 lots? Yeah, and I have the, the plans here. It was a... Uh, Shown as a, a 16 lot subdivision connecting from West Avenue uh, down to the south. Um, some of the lots on the western uh, portion, it is zoned R2, would be allowed as uh, condos or duplex condos right. on that side. Right, right. Uh, the, the remaining being single family. Okay. I see the developer here. Uh, sir? Looking pens too, so. Dan. By the yeah. way, <laughs> this isn't considered bribery. Do we have to <laughs> under two ninety nine? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, James. <clears throat> Pretty nice. Although you better check the price tag on it. Make yeah. sure it is under two ninety nine. Okay, Dan Cahill, 1414 Hillary, Burlington, Iowa. Um, most of you have received one of my handouts at prior meetings. Now, this is just a little bit different, not a lot different, but we have a new council person and another council person uh, in waiting. So I thought that I would give you some of this information again. And, I, and what, I, what I tried to do was go down make a list why this project that I've been working on since June is a good project for Burlington and why it should be approved. I know there's been a lot of controversy about uh, tax in increment districts and I don't know why because people seem to be convinced when you say tax increment financing people seem to think the city is pumping a bunch of money into <coughs> this and I'm just going to get filthy rich on it and I shouldn't and I'm using other people's tax money. Well that's absolutely the farthest thing from the truth so I'd like to call this tax increment development. I think people would understand it a little bit better that way because what this is is a development project and it is for the city of Burlington. So I've made a list uh, and over the right hand there I put, uh, I put benefits to the city, 1 through 12, and minuses to the city, i.e. possible objections. And there, put some notes in there. If you think there's an objection to that particular top, uh, topic, put it in there. Ask me about it later. Uh, I'm in the phone book, and I'm happy to come to hear any, any meetings you may have. If you have questions about any of these things I'm going to mention today. Number one, project will add 16 new and taxable and needed lots to the city of Burlington. Now, I know the Chamber of Commerce has been uh, asking for more residential development. In fact, I've even attached to the, this, these pages here. Uh, a letter from, uh, or article from the Hawkeye from last year, really, December 25, 2016, about this tax credit program that I'm trying to work <laughs> under here. And, uh, and it quotes Jason Hutchison as saying, future business growth and our ability to attract and retain workers. It's important we have housing. Number two, the total cost of this project is $500,000, paid in full by myself and my wife. The city has absolutely no money, not one penny, in this project. That's often misunderstood by people, and I don't know why, but they can't seem to get that straight. Number three, <coughs> this project conforms to the 1999 city development plan for a north-south street connecting West Avenue and Mason Road. Very important for Burlington, and I've attached to my handout today a copy of uh, the page from that city planning report that shows where they wanted a road. This was 1999. So 
This is a 20-year-old idea. The city hasn't made any progress on this plan for 20 years. Now we hope to make some progress. In, a, in any event, my proposal conforms to this plan. Uh, number four, Plan Street, which is approximately my share of it, would be 850 feet, and it will help solve the current traffic overload on Willow and West Avenue if and when completed south to Dill Street. And I've attached uh, a copy of my plan, and I've attached, uh, well, th th this, the plan you have on the screen, if, if Eric could move it a little farther that way, well, you see where Dill Street is. My land does not go quite to Dill Street. It's within 200 feet of Dill. And hopefully, if you could show the whole, the whole thing to Mason uh, Road, Eric, it would, be, it would be helpful because that's where the city wants a street to be, or it has at least in the past, and it's a great place for a street to be. All right. Uh, number five, total cost of the infrastructure, that's the engineering, grading, uh, the street itself, sewer, water, electrical, all underground, all, of course, in city code, costs $350,000. That's the, that's the estimates I have, anyway, right now from Klinger and Associates. You know, things uh, happen so you get, you know, you're not always within budget, but that's what the budget for those items are. And, and the other interesting thing, I think, the city owns the infrastructure upon completion, inspection, and acceptance by the city. I don't, own, I don't own the street. I don't own the water system. I don't own the electrical system. In fact, if I build a house there, I have to pay like $1,000 for a building permit uh, to, hook up to, to hook up to the city. doesn't make sense, but and the city can waive that, by the way, but I don't think... thinking of building? Well, I hope somebody builds. <laughs> I may have. I don't plan on building houses, okay. but if I did, I may have to build one or two to get it started. You have to do that in a subdivision to just get it started, so people get the idea and see what's going to be there. Number six, and this is uh, on the traffic in that area. I was going to mention if you don't think there's traffic in the area that this could help solve, go out in that area around 3 or 3.30 in the afternoon. You can't even get onto West Avenue. I mean, it's, a, it's pandemonium. So number six, large real estate tax increase to the city, the county, and the schools. This 7.94 acre parcel currently produces taxes total of $328 per year. Now that's divided between the city, this, the school, and the county. The city's share of that as, you, as I show there, is $129.46 per year. That's what you're making on the land right now. And I've attached a letter from the county treasurer that substantiates that claim. $126.46 a year. Sounds like it's not very much money. Now, the city, or the city county assessor estimates that if we get 16 houses built out there, the taxes, when the project is completed fully taxable, will be 118000 a year. That may be, it may not be, it's a rough guess, but it's a rough guess by Matt Warren, Warner, our city county assessor. So, I mean, that's what we're going by. It's not my figure. The Hawkeye was doing some uh, checking on things, and that's the figure that was in the paper. Now, the city's share of the 118000 which is 39.4% of your tax bills, if you look on your tax bills, you'll see that, is $46,574 a year. So it's a substantial increase from $129 a year to $46,000 a year if this project goes through. Pretty important to the city, I would guess. Now, during the 10 years, this is a 10-year project, or perhaps sooner, uh, you know, if, if uh, there's a great market for housing, modest, uh, what the state calls uh, workforce housing, $250,000 range and under, it could develop faster than 10 years. The first one that I did 20 years ago, uh, we sold those lots in three years. Worked out very well for the city. So in the meantime, during this 10-year period, the city will receive $134,400 in cash, in tax set-aside money. This is 
cash from the LMI, which is low and moderate income housing. The state code that we're operating under, this 403, provides that of the infrastructure costs of 350000 the city gets 38.4% back as houses are built and the houses go on the tax rolls. Well, that totals 134.4. That's where that figure came from. Uh, and the developer gets 61% or whatever the difference is. So the city is actually going to be getting more in this, this uh, set aside than they would if this were a fully taxed, immediately taxed project. Because you know, if people build a house, they're going to get a three year tax abatement and uh, or a 10 year tax abatement if they phase it in, which is 420% of the taxes for that period of t that 10 year period. So the interesting thing about this $134,400 that the city is going to get is that the city exclusively gets it. The school doesn't get it, and the county doesn't get any of it. It's exclusive to the city under Code Section 403. It's really, this is a really an interesting program being used all over the state of Iowa, except southeast. Well, no, it's southeast Iowa. Well, Fort Madison has got a project like this. So uh, that's interesting. The city gets it all, but they have to use it for low-rent housing. And I hope that it could be used. I, you know, chart. Uh, Charlie's block grant idea I think is super good for Burlington and I would hope some of the 134,000 could be used to get rid of some of these track some of the traps that we're having at Burlington. Our housing stock is going into the tank. It's really bad in many neighborhoods and I think some of this money it's it's the city's choice what they do with it but not mine but <coughs> I really think it'd be interesting if they could do that. Mm -hmm. And I think the block grant. Okay number eight. It's also important for jobs, 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 jobs. You know, it requires a lot of material and a lot of labor to put in a subdivision and build 16 houses. I mean, and I, I don't know what the, I estimate, we know it's 350000 for the infrastructure. And I thought if you build 16 homes and the cost with the material is 175000 I just guessed at that. It could be more, it could be a little less. Two million eight hundred eight hundred thousand dollars to do that. That's good for the city to have that money circulating in our suppliers. Number nine. This project is being developed as a workforce housing project within the designated urban renewal area. This is again under Code 403. It has to be within a urban renewal area. This designation provides building contractors tax benefits to encourage moderate priced housing. That's what we're doing here. We're trying to encourage moderate priced housing. We, I, I don't think we need any more $600,000 housing. We get plenty of those. We get a lot of lots that are going to cost $100,000 too. Now those are, <coughs> and there will be a lot of people who will be happy to hear, those are benefits that don't flow to the NK Hill. They flow to the builders that build the houses. And they really are super good and it is a lot of encouragement to builders. Because if it's this district as we have here, and it has been de designated as a workforce housing district, which the state has to approve, then the builders receive 10% of all <coughs> of the materials they put in these houses up to $150,000. So 10% of 150000 is 15000 That's what a builder will get if he can build a house, a modest price, sell it for under two hundred dollars I think it's $50,000. He gets 15000 back from the state. He's got to agree to build, uh, I think it's four houses in three years. So a builder can do that. And that, that's super good for, for our builders. They need that encouragement. In addition, if it's a workforce housing project, the builders get 6%, they get their, the, uh, the taxes that they pay on these materials, the 6% sales tax, they get that back from the state. It's, it's quite a program. The 15% or the 10% uh, that I said for material, it doesn't come back as cash. It comes back as a, a tax certificate or something, which they can then sell into the market if they want to, you know, the, those kind of certificates. That's a change in the law. It used to be they, they had to just use that money against their own tax uh, computations. Now they can sell it, which they can get 95% of the value of that usually on the open market for those kind of certificates. Okay, number 10, Park West LLC, that's a developer, that's me and Kathy. 
shoulders all financial obligations for the completion and success of the project. That's kind of important. The city has absolutely no liability here. And I, and I put down on this thing, think recession and real estate bust. I mean, <coughs> it does happen in real estate, as we all know. Uh, sometimes it goes down. Sometimes you don't build. It reminds me of the Flint Hill Manor project. I think it's the greatest project that ever hit Burlington. I think it's wonderful that the city did that. Took a lot of guts for the council to buy and do that, and they took a lot of static for that. Just so happens it was at a time when the real estate market went into the tank, and now look at the benefits we're getting from it. I mean, this is a long-term. This is a long-term project, just as that land was a kind of a long-term project. I think it was. It's one of the best projects the city has ever done. And it, So, number 11, no, this is, then this is the one that kind of gets, gets my goat because people have, are just, they just don't understand this program and I can't get the word out to them. That's why I come here with these outlines, hoping that some of this information will show up in the paper. <clears throat> it never does. It never does. I've got all the articles that have been written about this project and not one of these points has been mentioned, not one. Number, uh, number 11, no current taxpayer in the city will pay higher taxes because of this development. Only the developer and future owners of lots in Park West subdivision will pay the costs associated with this project. That's it. And I put over, well, I get a note to myself, Leon will be happy. On this <laughs> no, he won't. <laughs> no, that's probably true, too. Don't kid but yourself. I, I was out of town when you had your meeting last week, but we read it, the paper on the computer, and, and it says that he said, well, I'm not going to be paying any tax that my taxes shouldn't have to go up because of what Cahill's doing out here. Well, he doesn't have to worry about that. <clears throat> Number 12, and I think this is kind of, this is an important one also, and I think the council in Burlington should be pretty serious about this. Residential development in the city of Burlington, rather than in the county or neighboring cities, is extremely important in expanding our tax base and tax receipts for the city. Now, I have a list of all of the lots that are for sale in Des Moines County. And I'm telling you, there are a lot of lots, not just for sale, but for development that have been developed in West Burlington and in other small towns and out in the county. Not good for Burlington. Used to be the cities had some control on that because uh, they couldn't get water out there. Then once we got wrapping water, all hell breaks loose about building in the, in the county. Why wouldn't you? Your taxes are 39% less on exactly the same house. So, and I know when I was here, oh, about a month ago, the council had just uh, uh, approved not the final plat and and well the preliminary plat and the final plat of a of a five lot subdivision is going to be on Summer Street just outside the city limits. <coughs> That's the competition for my 16 lots because the taxes are so much less in the county. Okay. I uh, I just and I and I and I give you these. Uh, Outlines. I'm hoping that you'll look at them, and uh, and I know you can't vote on it tonight, but I hope that if you read it and you have any questions about any of those 12 points, that you'll call me, or anybody else calls me. If I could get the information in the paper, then I could get some calls from these people or emails, and I could try to explain them to them uh, some of the things I put in here. Now I call a plan like this a 10, a 10 year plan, I'm 76, so that's just a little bit uh, on the old side to be doing a 10 year real estate project, see? But, uh, and I call it, this project kind of delayed gratification. Someday the city is really gonna love the taxes that are coming off this property. And it might be 10 years, it might be five years, might be four years, I don't know. But that's delayed gratification. And uh, an investment, It's a, this is an investment uh, of course, for us, and we hope that it works out. If it doesn't, we take the, finan the financial fall. The city does not, so everybody can be sh assured of that, okay? 
Thank you for taking their time coming down. You bet. Thank hey, you. don't think you're going to get everything you want just because you brought a pretty lady with you. You need to go somewhere with that. <laughs> Nobody should help. <laughs> it always helps, my friend. Jim, do you see anything here that you object to or refute? Or... No. No? Okay. Council, we good to move forward? Or? You're smarter than I am. I'm good. I don't know. I'd, I'd refute that. Uh, you know, Jim? Basically, I, I'm in favor of plans like this for two reasons. The infill, I'm, I'm always interested in the infill. Uh, I was, like I was mentioned to uh, Linda, I, first time, ever since I lived in this town, I you know, drive around and here's a corn field or a bean field right in the middle of town. And you can, it's just some compute. So the infill part is really good, and, it, and the LMI fund is a really good point from my perspective. My only issue uh, is if this is approved, then the rest of the people are going to want to do the same thing. So Say we're it again. The, what? The, the, the others are going to want to do the same thing. It's going to be a precedent that we're setting. Oh, definitely. Yeah, so, I was going to bring that up. So this just refers to the one section. Right. So these other two owners, if they come forward, are going to say, we want the same thing. So I guess what I'm, I won't be here then. The so new people will have to be okay with us setting this precedent. That's what I'm, what I'm saying. Because there's the new three are going to be the ones that, and you two, in two years or four years, are going to have the same thing yeah. coming. You know? Well, I, I, for me, the the math adds up. I mean, if if you, you know, I, one of the things I campaigned on it was uh, growing our tax base, and for me, when you look at the previous development we did utilizing uh, the tax increment financing, uh, it's a pretty good payoff. I mean, we, it was $750,000. Uh, once that bond was taken care of in 2006, uh, the figures that Dan showed us and, and verified, I verified $2.1 million in property tax since 2006. And when you look at it that way, um, yeah, you know, are we playing loose with the rules, uh, possibly as far as what TIF development is all about, maybe. It depends on your interpretation. By the same token, that's we're in the competition with every other city in America for, for these these type of funds. So for me, the math adds up. I, I don't have a problem going forward uh, using that that mentality. And also, we're providing, you know, the problem with tax abatement is an undeveloped field. Most people aren't going to build one home if there's not a street or sewer hooked up for it. Right. So it's not like an infill project when you're when you're in a city block that already has those pre-existing items. So I, I don't really have a problem with it going forward as far as others coming okay. forward and knocking on our door. And bring it. I'd like to see our city grow. Okay. Well, okay. that's all I have to say. Anyway. The else I'm is good. The pen. Keep it, you can keep it. Can I vote no? I, actually, I, 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 I wanted one of those. I wanted one of those pens, sir. I, I never got one. All I get is the laugh now. <laughs> I knew you'd turn on me. It was just a matter of time. Uh, are we good then? Yes. I'm good. Yep. Okay. All right, guys. We're moving forward then. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, next, we have number four. It's a motion for preliminary adoption of the second reading of an ordinance vacating and selling a portion of College Street right of way located between Valley Street and Marcus Street, Burlington, Iowa. Mr. Tislin, do you have? Uh, uh, no changes from previous reading. Again, just vacating the portion between uh, the school and the parking lot, uh, unused portion of city right away, uh, and would go to the current owner of the property. Do you guys want to bump that? Do you want to do you want to yes, do a? Yes, let's please. wave it. Okay. What about number five? Motion for preliminary adoption of a second reading of an ordinance amending Chapter 126 Taxi Cabs and Vehicles for Hire Burlington Iowa Code of Ordinances, and deleting Chapter 127 Vehicles for Hire Drivers in its entirety. Chief, you don't have anything to add to that, do you? That's just a minor. Right. Yeah. You guys, uh, are we cold bumping that then too? Yes. Can we please. Go. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That seems like it has to take forever. <laughs> We're going to get you squared away, Chief. Give us, give us a minute. We're going to get her done. Okay. <coughs> uh, number six is a resolution approving the final plat of Arbor View Estate Subdivision. Mr. Tisland? Uh, this is continuation of the project uh, Scott Zeiser's looking to do uh, there off of. Uh, Cliff Road, uh, just to the north of Zeiser's Greenhouse. Uh, with the short le week last week, we did place this on the agenda. We are still waiting for from some information on the infrastructure, some testing and results. So if that doesn't come 
uh, back to the city uh, in a positive manner by probably Wednesday. This will not remain on the agenda. So um, we still do have to uh, get that information from them as well. Uh, but with the short week last week, uh, wanted to bring this forward in case we did get that uh, in place. Um, again, this is a 25 lot subdivision with two new roads, uh, Arborview uh, Drive and Harvest Lane uh, with uh, zero lot line development. Uh, Lots one through, uh, what is it, 15 um, would be duplex condos with uh, one half on each uh, individual lot. Uh, does reserve an out lot on the north side of that uh, cul-de-sac that the owner has to maintain a letter of credit for. Uh, once the uh, property to the north develops, that street is required to connect to the north and be installed. Um, he chose to not install it at this time, but would uh, be required to have a letter of credit on hand for that. Um, the detention pond uh, on the south uh, is, was installed by the developer. That's uh, one item that is uh, under review as well, making sure that meets all our criteria. Um, and then lots 18 through 21 uh, under the previous uh, preliminary plat approval, uh, with those being over the 750 feet and not having the second access to the north at this time, uh, those do have to have a residential sprinkler system. Uh, that the developer agreed to uh, if those are constructed before a through street is uh, connected to the north. Um, so those are the, the, I guess, preliminary items on this. The uh, preliminary plat was approved in June uh, the, by the uh, city planning or the city council. Um, and then this uh, is under a PUD ordinance. Our review states uh, PUD and does meet all the requirements of that. So. The primary item right now is uh, the infrastructure, making sure the testings all come back on that. If it does not, if we don't get all that on hand, then it'd probably be the following meeting that this will come back on. Good. Eric, is that drainage or is that on concrete? It, on um, everything at this point, I think. And maybe Nick can, as far as what information you guys require to accept, we would need a resolution accepting the infrastructure and everything. Prior to leaving last week, I had a conversation with Jesse. We had not received any information. Um, we require core samples um, on the testing for the concrete to determine thickness and to determine on what their air slump and, and whatnot were. So we haven't received any of that information from the engineering firm that they that the Scott Zeiser was using. So. Until we hear back about that, um, we won't accept that infrastructure. You have stormwater detention issues? or Correct. As you can see, the stormwater detention pond right there, its outlet is unfortunately <coughs> on Sunnyside <coughs> Avenue. Um, so it discharges out onto the road, follows the curb line, and then fall, goes into an intake. There is very limited storm sewer intakes or any infrastructure at all off of Sunnyside. Um, the requirement would have, the closest thing nor is, is north of the subdivision, um, and there's a break point where things start to go north and then versus south. Mm -hmm. um, after looking at it, it probably would have been in, the, in a better interest to have some sort of storm sewer brought in and have the detention pond put in a different location. Um, but there is the, uh, the, the intake inside of the detention pond sits low enough now that it will release water too frequently, in my opinion, onto Sunnyside. So we're working with Scott to try and get that raised up so it will only do it on major rain events. But storm sewer off of Sunnyside is an issue. And so I think that we probably will at some point. Not just with this development. Not just this development specifically. Well, how so much is going to help things? <coughs> how much of a rain event would it take under, I guess we can't figure that out. Under, uh, right now? Yeah. Uh, a half inch rain would probably the, have water run for, oh, for a day. Inch? Really? The the biggest concern is where you have the, the tube that drains out of it, the height within the detention. Yeah, yeah the, the intake within the detention pond needs to sit higher. And I know that we've cor we've corresponded with both uh, the developer and the engineering firm. So on the that. idea is it's relaxing and it's supposed to absorb in the ground before Correct. it gets your intake. And the rest of the in terms of this compared to the preliminary plat that was approved, the height, the, does the drainage work off of the off of the lots the way it was originally designed? Well, the preliminary plat, it, it meets that. It's the construction design, some the, of those criteria. The, there are some areas on the backside, I think in the north, 
uh, east corner that uh, were lower and they were bringing in some of the from some of the basements to try and fill that back in there was original a, a preliminary or an original drainage plan that was submitted um, after I know that Jesse the city engineer has reviewed uh, a revised drainage plan and they are beginning to dig some basements and they're trying to put some fill back there in order to comply with what their previous drainage uh, report would be they'd have to bring in a I don't know a lot of dirt to be able to make that fill work um, I don't I'm not overly concerned if they were to fix the issues that they had in front of them um, that there won't be any excess water created onto the yeah. the property owners to the east more so than that was already there okay. um, but they so do have to bring dirt in to that those I think they already have enough to meet the requirements I have no I have I would be able to answer that now is that part of getting it's to where part of you Jesse's have review is the okay. stormwater plan okay yep. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you, Nick. You guys good? Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, we'll go on to the consent agenda. Number one, a resolution approving final acceptance and release of retention monies for the 2016 HMA resurfing project. Nick? Uh, this project uh, is finally getting completed and shut out. Um, uh, this was started last fall um, and then began again this spring. It's been complete for some time, um, but there was some cu questions on the quantity counting for, for the asphalt, both in thickness and the, the tons used. Um, but as you can see here, there's a final payment of 39000 right, and then release of $0.30 uh, um, in 30 days. So the engineer's estimate on this project was 506000 uh, the total as-built cost is $533,501, uh, so a little bit over budget. Uh, some of that comes in the quantity adjustments that happened because of the uh, additional asphalt that was laid. Um, and in this project, Plain Street, um, Parkway Avenue, Ironwood um, were all completed. So I recommend approval. And Plain Part of it had to be resurfaced. Correct. They came back and they redid that. Uh, it was it was fairly bumpy on the right. southbound, um, just south of Division. Yeah. So that has been redone. Yeah. I a lot. Okay. You guys good? Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Number two, resolution approving final acceptance of the 2016 former Dresser Rand site cleanup project. This again is close out of this project. Um, again, Jay Petticord of Des Moines uh, was awarded the contract for this. There were a couple minor change orders, uh, which added uh, to the cost some additional uh, contaminated soil uh, category uh, increases and screening material. And then there was a couple others that uh, there was less quantity that they were able to reduce the cost. So the total uh, cost was six hundred seventeen thousand nine thirty. Um, there is some work uh, to be done on that site as far as a, a city project for some of the stormwater on the west side. Um, the, I think there's a storm line that runs under that that uh, intake would be needed to properly drain that site. Uh, the other intakes would be need to be brought in two or three feet of fill to get to, so that, that seems to be the best option. I've had some discussions with Public Works about that uh, project to eliminate that ponding on the west side of that uh, site. Still there is today, and the standing water will be there until we get an intake. the The height of that land is just the only way that you're going to get it to where it drains is to have an intake that'll carry it uh, with into the stormwater system. Uh, that's a project that you kind of guessed in the twenty, maybe twenty thousand dollar range. Um, so it's not a significant project, but it is a project that needs done for that to drain adequately. And so that it's marketable. Uh, it would make it better, uh, but part of the question has also been if you put in a drain at, at this point and you ended up marketing it and uh, having someone purchase it, uh, you may end up putting the intake in a position that's different than where they would ultimately want it. So for us to put it in, we may end up spending money that uh, is uh, kind of a waste of money, but absent it being sold, yeah. it needs done. Yeah. So it, it's something that we're looking at is most likely we're going to 
be bringing forward a project to spend to, to do that, and recognizing that it may ultimately not be in the ideal location for whoever may use yeah. it in the future, but, but it needs done. To me, it's not a Yeah, it needs done. Because it's come a long way, though, baby. We're not. <clears throat> do, Eric, do we have retention on this? We, I think we just have the bond on it. Okay. Yep. So we've we've paid them off. Yeah. Okay. Yep. The I guess one note on it: it is in the land recycle, recycling program. Um, talked to Impact Seven G on that. Uh, there are we did get a letter from the DNR on a couple items just through our work plan uh, that they're addressing. DNR had some change in staff, so it's a part of it was just clarification for the new staff. But um, hopefully. Um, once all that gets addressed and they accept that, that we can get the no further action letter uh, here probably late winter. Um, and at that point, I think the only restriction we have to do is a restrictive covenant on uh, no residential housing on the site. Um, but otherwise, uh, he felt that everything should be able to be addressed and get the no further action letter from the DNR. That's groovy. You guys good? Yes. Yes, sir. Every time I drive past there, I'm just reminded of how far that area has come along, man. What uh, what a blessing it is just to be at this point. Number three, a resolution approving an application for funds from the Transportation Al Alternatives Alternatives Program for the West Avenue Trail. Mr. Tislin. This is a project we're working with Public Works on, but... Uh, Looking to apply for uh, TAP funds uh, for the section of West Avenue Trail between Roosevelt Avenue and uh, Terrace Drive. Uh, we currently have this in uh, the budget. I think it's FY20 uh, as an identified project uh, with grant funds being part of the funding source for it. We don't have grant funds at this point, so this would uh, fill in that uh, gap of having grant funds. Uh, but this would uh, connect up the existing trail on West Avenue. Uh, the yellow portion is uh, what is constructed uh, that connects up from the hospital around the recplex uh, down West, West Avenue to Roosevelt. Um, and then there's the gap along the south side of Notre Dame uh, and U.S. Bank. And then it picks up uh, behind Fairway uh, Food Store. There's a eight-foot trail that connects up to Ed Stone. Um, and then we do have funds secured for the north side of Mason Road. Uh, connecting from Edstone over to Haskell Street. So uh, this uh, gap is a, kind of a key connection uh, to get from uh, residences on the east side of this uh, trail that will be constructed uh, hopefully next year, Edstone uh, over to uh, Roosevelt Avenue. Would include some signalization on Roosevelt Avenue as well as a crossing on uh, West Avenue. Um, looking at the cost estimate here. Uh, it was uh, 267000 um, That includes a 10% contingency as well as engineering cost. Uh, we did have a uh, local match identified in the <coughs> CIP, um, $35,000, uh, also using 18000 from Wellmark Healthy Communities Grant that uh, was uh, for improvements on the Roosevelt Crossing and uh, minor amount under 500 from the ADA transition plan. So this would uh, cross West Avenue and then have a retaining wall on the back side of the fence there that Notre Dame just installed and have a 10-foot wide trail uh, going up to Roosevelt, Roosevelt Avenue with an improved crossing on Roosevelt as well. Nick, has, have there been surveyors out plotting out this Long Mason Road? Yeah, we have a new staff member on hand, uh, so you maybe haven't recognized it, but we've had some staff uh, surveying Mason Road. So it's currently under design, hopefully to be let sometime this spring. Oh, yeah. Good deal. Thanks. Okay. Council, you guys good? Yes. Yep. Yes. But this is only an application for funds, correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yep. So... How soon are you going to know on the application for that? How soon will that? Is that this? Due December. And it's due then. When does the region take those up and consider them? Do you um, remember, Jim, you said um, on? Um, 
I'm not on the committee subcommittee anymore. So February March time frame. I think that sounds right. So yeah, and it's scored. So kind of depends on what else comes in. Who the other applicants are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, do. All right, we good. Yes. Number four, resolution approving energy efficiency, uh, efficiency plan agreement, addendum between the City of Burlington, Iowa and Huckleberry Hotel at 3001 Winegard Drive, Suite 130, Burlington, Iowa, for purchase of two level two charging systems and one level three station piano man. Jerry Parks, 2729 South Main, uh, chairperson for the Renewable Energy Committee. This, uh, this document is the final link in the uh, Alliant Energy Bright Ideas grant program that funded our original five charging stations and then this uh, extra three. Uh, this is simply a, an agreement between Fun City and Burlington stipulating their uh, responsibilities. Basically, all the other charging stations were required under the grant to be open and free to the public for a five-year period after installation. <coughs> and uh, the only difference between this contract and all the other contracts is that uh, since a fast charger uses so much electricity so quickly, they are allow changing the contract just slightly to allow uh, that particular charging station to charge a fee mm -hmm. to, for the use of the electricity. The other two that Fun City is installing uh, will still be covered under the five-year free to the public uh, as a way of kind of increasing, you know, in encouraging the transition to electric cars. And uh, the project at Fun City is moving right along. They are putting in uh, infrastructure for the three charging stations, and they're also adding additional conduct, conduit, uh, feeling that there may be a need for even more than the three that are going in right That's now. That's cool. So, things are we're real pleased. Things are moving right along. You guys Where are pretty pleased about that, aren't you? Yeah. That's a good deal, though. Good, good stuff. Yeah, we're happy. Huh? Where are these going to be located, actually? I'm not familiar with Huckleberry Hotel. Okay. Um, <laughs> there, it's changed a little bit, and I, I can't honestly tell you the specific locations, okay. you know, at Fun City there. All right. I, I was going to ask, too, one but place and that's, that's, you're not sure if that's going to be on <laughs> the side where they're building new? You're, yeah, you're, that's part of the... It will be on that side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, okay. Or the Hampton Inn. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. You guys good? Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, discussion items: We have uh, treasurer's report. Annette, please and thank you. Okay. I just realized I didn't give you guys June thirtieth again, but nothing has changed since. I can't hear you. There, is that better? Okay, I re just realized that you guys do not have June 30th, but it has not changed since last month. The auditors are still going over the numbers, but nothing has changed. So in the packet was October's treasurer's report. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the biggest thing that I'd probably point out is if you're looking at the capital projects, there's lots of um, projects going on that are negative right now and that's just timing issues between the funding sources and draws from and reimbursements that we haven't received yet and so we've had some pretty big projects going on but other than that I mean we're moving right along and there's some things that are wrapping up like the trail the first phase of the south south trail is wrapping up and looks like agency streets getting pretty close on that on it's coming. The, Come. West side. Questions for Annette? It's hard to look at your fund balances. For those who are not quite familiar with how things work, uh, as you look through expenditures and revenues to date, and um, our revenues, uh, major categories like property taxes, two times a year, and we did get our first significant check, would be in the October one? Yes. But yes. none of the transfers have occurred. We do transfers twice a year. Which would be December. And so you're going to see the bulk of the money that would come into, say, like the general fund uh, doesn't show that the show there because it, we won't have that first half of transfer occur until the December time frame, and then the second half would be in June. So it's hard to make those numbers look right on a year-to-date perspective for revenues. Uh, then, but the expenditure side, of, a good chunk of those uh, do look a little bit closer to what you would expect to be for 33% through the year. Correct. 
correct? And then again, there's some funds, like our internal service funds are always a month behind as far as revenue goes because we bill the next month for the month before. And so that doesn't really true up until the end of the year. We're good. Thank you. We're good. Yes. And so are you, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Annette. Okay. Uh, next, we, next we have uh, appointments. We have two withdrawals. Um, so, and we have uh, one that has uh, shown interest, I, I believe, that has paperwork in. Uh, Kyrie Duckett will be one of the replacements, and we do have another replacement as well. That so the two names that are in here for reappointment, will they are not going to be a reappointment. So they're going to be someone to fill those two positions. And as you're saying, one of them is Kyrie Duckett, and we'll have another name that will be listed uh, on the agenda for next week. We've talked with Kyrie. Okay. We talked to those two ladies. Yes. Yes. And so that's it. <clears throat> so that's it. So you guys good? Huh? They're out. They're out. All right. Uh, Mr. Chisholm. Oh, and just to mention, and I don't know, did you say the snow bowl we're not doing tonight? Oh, uh, we're not doing snow bowl tonight. Uh, their their request to come before the council is they. they they withdrew that request, so but it was after the agenda went out. Sometimes, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Mr. Dislett, before Jim gets me started. Nothing. We're good? Antoinette? I'm good. John Phillips? I'm good. Jim Davidson? I just want to thank everybody that volunteered to help at the Thanksgiving Day thing. That was terrific. You did a great job. Well said. Well said. Bishop? I'm good. City manager? Um, remember the combined meeting with the Planning Commission on Thursday at 4.30 here for those of, of you who can make it. Uh, we're doing the tour on Thursday morning. And it'll take a good chunk of the day. And I hopefully that's for the new, new council members mm -hmm. to go see the different facilities. Um, I can't remember the time that we start. <laughs> 8.30. So hopefully you remember. It's 8.30, right? Okay. Yeah. At your place, out of Public Works is where we're beginning. Um, the only other thing, the, the parade this, this weekend was nice. It was neat to see the, besides all of our emergency services being partaking in that, to also see uh, Public Works had all our snow plows out on that. Uh, they, they looked really good uh, to see the Those were Nick's Nick's <laughs> Nick's snow plows, Nick's <laughs> snow snow plows uh, and uh, the blades. Um, neat to see the work that went in from the different schools to, yeah. to get those ready okay. for this season. So, and Nick, did you have something you wanted to update the council on? Yes. I just wanted to discuss. I know it's the Nebraska Iowa game. Oh, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> that was pretty bad. Um, yeah, it was. <laughs> not quite as bad as Notre Dame losing, but um, Ooh. hey, Ooh. sling it mud, I'll sling it back. Wait, 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 wait. 56? No, I know that was bad. Wait, wait, wait. Pause the camera, pause the camera. <laughs> Okay. I just wanted to bring this to your attention. I kind of maybe said something before the meeting. Um, this is a sample section of what uh, the design called for, for our flood wall, the section of flood wall that you'll see. Um, it is, if, if you can tell, it's some fins running up and down. Um, we have a, a conference call tomorrow to discuss the form liner and how we're going to move forward. I just wanted to bring this to your attention in case there needs to be a decision made. Um, potentially at the next council meeting um, about a change of direction. I, I have some concerns about this, uh, this aesthetic look. Um, I was able to walk up to that section, able to pop off the, uh, the thinnest fin there, and I'm concerned about the long-term integrity yeah. of, of that look. So I just wanted to bring this to your attention that we might be bringing this forward in front of you next week. I, don't, I probably should have a full meeting with the uh, the advisory committee that did this. Um, we had some other concerns with it too, in regards to somebody <laughs> painted spray painted on it. The ability to 
Yeah, graffiti would be awfully hard to clean on this. Um, you'd still be is able this to... the section that, you know, that goes above? This is going to be seen. Correct. Yep. Yes. Right. Yes. Yep. Wow. This sits on top of the permanent. The big mass wall. No, this is this is concrete. This is the permanent wall. Yeah, the stuff that goes on top of it is aluminum panels right. and okay. columns. Yeah. This is the wall itself. Yep. So, just wanted to bring this. Thanks for, yeah, thanks for. Uh... I just want to make sure that we uh, yes. we get what we want for the long term. Right you know, on. we're spending a lot of money on this, money and um, I want to make sure that we're making good decisions. So, and we appreciate you making sure that we're making good decisions. Well, thank you. But if, if you can walk up there and dink it off, then what's the point? Yeah. Well, the other, the thing would concern me would and be the, graffiti would be almost impossible big, to get off there. Forty some inches. So yeah, it, there's. It's gonna have to be. It's gonna have to be smooth or something. And big flat sur well, not flat necessarily, but big flat surfaces of concrete tend to invite graffiti. Um, part and part of the concern that I mean, what this does help to have if you have the that fin look, um, you're gonna have concrete sections that are different lengths, and it helps will help to mask where those join together. Uh, if we get a smooth surface, you're gonna not not going to have that masking occur so you're going to then see a pattern where the diff where there's you can see where the two where the concrete sections match and they're not going to be evenly spaced so it, that will have a funky look to it too it's not like there's a real great win to what the design comes out my suggestion was and this is my lack of understanding of some of this stuff but was in the in the paving outside on the front the flat surface we're doing some sandblasting patterning I was hoping, thinking that maybe we could bring that up into the flood wall yeah, to make it look sense. good. Yeah. So, because we saw pictures of some of this months ago, I know you what, did what it would look like, and they said that sandblasting was going to be easy. To so, do. I we have a conference call tomorrow, so hopefully I have some more information I can maybe Take update you prior to the meeting. So, and then maybe get maybe get a decision in front of you next I week if if needed. Now. So. Thank you, sir. What's, like, what's the question was, what's the height of the wall again? Is it 48? It's about 42 40, inches 40 um, for most of it. There are sections that are open so that you can walk out over top of the river where there's railing around it. As you go further south towards the, where the, <coughs> in between the auditorium and lift station, there was a boat ramp there. Some of that will be a little bit taller as it starts to go west. And when you look at that, it looks like that's about eight feet. Yeah, it, it only goes up to my it's head. Not, right, that's right. It's not. It's not. It's a perspective shot. <laughs> If you have somebody painting your snow plows, could you also have someone do murals? Murals, murals on, the flood wall? on the flood wall? I suppose we probably could. Mm -hmm. On your flood no. He's trying to take one step ahead. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Linda Murray? I caught it. It was a little late. Do you have anything you want to say tonight? No, I don't. Thank you. All right. Uh, <laughs> just want to uh, foreclose out. Thank Tanner Cole for getting a haircut. It's about time. Uh, again, I want to say to Rob Sussman, uh, we're going to miss you. You're not gone yet. And uh, also, just uh, good to see Rob Kreitzer uh, in the audience tonight. Always good to see you, my friend. And uh, just want to encourage everybody that has a business in downtown Burlington uh, that if you don't have lights uh, uh, flash in downtown, that we encourage you to light up downtown Burlington. Uh, the citizens are loving it. So uh, I think that's all I've got. We're good to go. I think Tanner being on the well, garbage no. truck was a good one. Yeah. Oh, I, I, yes. <laughs> I love you, man. Tanner tries it. All right, we're dismissed. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you. I love you, man. <laughs>